and students. Take only two seconds for minutes because there's nothing going on uh, except you, ma'am, and our speakers. Sit down here. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Innovation Council Investiture Ceremony. I request all the guests to kindly mute your mics while the session is on. Over to the MCs. Everything comes to us that belongs to us if we create the capacity to receive it. These are the words of Rabindranath Tagore, which hold particular significance today as we recognize the students who took the brave step of expanding the repertoire and doing more than what was expected. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My co-host, Sahad Padar, and I, Divya Mankini, extend a warm welcome to you all to the Investiture Ceremony 2021. Thank you, Divya. We take great pleasure in welcoming Managing Director and CEO of the Indus Trust, Lieutenant General Arjun Ray. We welcome Mrs. Preetam Benjamin, the founder principal of Indus International School, Bangalore. A hearty welcome to the principals from our sister schools, Mr. Sandeep Chabra, Mrs. Aparna Achanta, and Dr. Prasida Shrikumar, and our Chief Philosophy Officer, Mrs. Preeti Prabhu. Indus has strongly believed that our journey can only be successful if we have the parent community alongside, shoulder to shoulder in every endeavor we take. We want to thank all the parents who have joined us this session to encourage the leaders of the future. Now, as is the custom at Indus, we shall begin our investiture ceremony with Tagore's best known poem, Where the Mind is Without Fear.
thank you, Adri Jaindia, for that soulful rendition. Innovation is an impetus to break the status quo and craft a future where only few have dared to go. Innovation is the very pulse of everything done at Indus under the aegis of Lieutenant General Arjun Ray, whose vision is to make the culture of innovation the very DNA of its pedagogy. Today, we have gathered for the investiture ceremony, which is a formal event where the school celebrates the leadership qualities of its students by recognizing and appointing deserving ones in the student council. As a natural progression from the innovation curriculum that we all passionately pursue here at INDAS, this year, the student council has metamorphosized into the innovation council. That's right, Divya. This transformation finds its rationale in keeping up with the demands and the skill requirement of today's quicksilver world, as well as tomorrow's unpredictable future. The VUCA world requires an open mind, which is ready to collaborate, negotiate, and creatively find solutions to not only existing problems, but to anticipate and be future ready. To use failures as stepping stones and make the best use of available resources and talents. The Innovation Council plans to drive projects that are initiated to make students proactive and ignite a growth mindset. The four projects this year would include well-being for the pursuit of happiness, ensuring that every child has a personal vision to pursue and focuses on inducing positive emotions like joyfulness, love, and gratitude. The next innovation project is called Affordable Technologies for Equal Opportunities. This project aims to harness, curate, and optimize access to technology and digital tools for the less privileged alongside skill development for them to stand at par with the rest in the society. We also have the project on culture of innovation and lifelong learning. This project will look at building empathy in students, making them creative problem solvers and building a culture of being self-directed learners. Our fourth innovation project is called the power of persuasive communication. This project would endeavor to build situational awareness, construct unbiased points of view by encouraging keen listening and observation and use social media constructively. Each student across grades who has found his or her place in this prestigious council has undergone a rigorous selection process where they had to achieve a cutoff in their innovation spin score and clear several rounds of interview. Ladies and gentlemen, it's no mean feat and deserves our best wishes as these young eagles stand ready to take up their mantles, fly high and drive several innovative projects. Leaders become great, not because of their power, but because of their ability to empower others. We at Indus are familiar with this adage, not because we see it from John Maxwell, but because we see it happening every day. Mrs. Sarojini Rao, the principal of Indus International School, Bangalore, is a living example of this leadership, a lifelong learner and a role model. Mrs. Rao exemplifies these leadership qualities. May I now request our principal, Mrs. Sarojini Rao, to enlighten us on the necessity of creating a culture of innovation. Parents, teachers, and dear students, good morning to you all. We are fortunate to have Lieutenant General Arjun Ray to preside over the 19th investiture of the Indus Innovation Council. He is a visionary leader and mentor, a distinguished officer known for his compassion and firmness and the habit of leading by example. As a general of the Indian Army, he redefined the role of the armed forces as war prevention and not winning wars. And now, in his second innings in the last two decades, he has redefined the role of education as preparation for life and not examination. That, ladies and gentlemen, is innovation and transformation. Thanks to General Ray's uh, foresight, he set up the Indus Training and Research Institute, the Indus School of Leadership, the Indus International Community School. He introduced robots as teacher assistants, and most recently, the startup school. The concept of the Innovation Council is his brainchild. The philosophy is to nurture a culture of innovation and being startup ready in a world that is getting increasingly uncertain and volatile. General Ray is always finding new opportunities to unlock our potential. Thank you, sir. We're also honored to have Mrs. Preetam Benjamin, our founder principal. Thank you, ma'am, for always taking time to be with us. 
It inspires us to give our best. The first investiture was held under your leadership. Your best wishes and blessings to the council members will go a long way in motivating them. I would also like to welcome our three principals, Mr. Sandeep Chabra, Mrs. Aparna Chanta, and Dr. Prasida Srikumar, and of course, our, chief, our very own chief philosophy officer, Ms. Preeti Prabhu. Hearty welcome to our PAC chair, Mrs. Deepti Jethanandani, and co-chair, Mrs. Varsha Bhandari. In the present times, all stakeholders of schools need greater clarity on the purpose of education, especially in the context of an uncertain, uh, volatile world. Is it to equip our students academically with subject knowledge to pass examinations and tests? Or is it to prepare them for a life which is getting increasingly um, chaotic, volatile, machine-driven, and uncertain? Certainly, it is to prepare them for life. The vision of the IBO and the vision of Indus is about nurturing students into engaged citizens who think beyond the boundaries of academics and perceive themselves as agents of change who have a sense of purpose and a mission to achieve. And that sense of purpose is not about examinations, grades, and placements. It is transformational. Academic achievements become part of the process rather than the end. So this transformation journey is what we call as innovation. As part of the innovation training, students as young as our early years have been trained to introspect on a personal vision on any aspect that concerns, interests, intrigues, or disturbs them. It goes beyond self. The issues are wide ranging from women's empowerment, child rights, human rights, animal welfare, art, music, environment, garbage, water, anything and everything that impacts the community. And this has been translated into specific goals, which includes building the skills of introspection, reflection, and reading. The goals may change, but the vision will remain the same as the students progress into higher education. An important aspect of a personal vision is to visualize the kind of world they would like to live in. The second aspect is empathy. Empathy is the beginning of innovation and service is a platform to nurture empathy. Our basic premise is that true leaders serve first and in the process, they transform themselves and others. Servant leadership is a powerful tool for emotional and spiritual competencies. And that is why community service forms an important part of the curriculum. Our students have been given service opportunities in dealing with climate challenges, migrant workers, and many more. The third aspect is the design thinking process. The design thinking process is another milestone in nurturing innovative capabilities in our eagles. The objective is to build a designer's mind by following a tried and tested process. We have been instilling qualities of a designer's mind in our eagles for the last five years. The design thinking process in simple terms is a human-centric and collaborative way to identify problems and thereafter come up with creative solutions. It helps in recognizing problems which often misses the eye or is misunderstood. So our eagles have been engaged in various design thinking projects over the last few years. And needless, needless to say, goal setting and deep reading are important tools for innovation development. Deep reading is mindful reading to identify concepts and experiment or apply them in, in life or work. And deep readers are deep thinkers as we all know. So we have been building the habit of reading in our students, exposing them to different genres, thereby building up their critical thinking and empathy levels. The Innovation Council is a major leap in this direction. To put it in plain terms, it is preparation for life. The council members have been nominated after a thorough and elaborate selection process 
based on each individual's innovation score and potential. And going ahead in the coming years, the criteria will be consolidated and more students from the lower grades will get an opportunity to be part of the council and perhaps head the council if their innovation quotient is high. Having said that, innovation is not about positions in the council. So all those who have not made it to the council are also innovators in the making and will get equal opportunities to practice innovation. My congratulations to each one of you, your teachers and parents for instilling sound values in you. Thank you and all the best. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiring words. Ladies and gentlemen, we shall shortly begin the investiture ceremony before which we would like to share the organization of the Innovation Council. The Innovation Council comprises of the school captains and the school sports captains. Unlike the traditional school council, this year the Innovation House captains and their peers from respective houses will be responsible for driving climate action projects. Innovation project captains will steer four major innovative projects that we talked about earlier. We present to you the members of the Junior Innovation Council who would also be driving the four initiatives at their level. In the Council for Well-Being and Pursuit of Happiness, we have Venka Trago from Grade 8, Siddharth Manoj from Grade 8, Sri Lakshmi Nandan from Grade 5, and Naomi Lobu from Grade 4. In the Council of, for Culture of Innovation and Lifelong Learning, sorry, uh, in the, my apologies, in the Council for Affordable Technologies for Equal op Opportunities, we have Doug Sahani from Grade 7. Arjun Vishwanathan from Grade 7. Tejasvi Ram Murli Dhar from Grade 5. and Callum James Bottom from grade five. The Council for Culture of Innovation and Lifelong Learning has Iman Zara Khan from grade six, Delisha Agarwal from grade seven, Quintin Kilgoat from grade five, and Mahika Kataria from grade four. The Council for Power of Persuasive Communication has Siddharth Mitra from grade eight, Ashna Thakur from grade six, Antra Mishra from grade five, and Ariana Chobo from grade four. Bringing the bodies and the minds together would be the two primary years school sports captains, Arjun Pai, and Parika Mehul Doshi. And now is the time to reveal the position holders for the much coveted whole school badges. We present to you the Innovation House Captains, who would be responsible along with their house members in driving three whole school projects that INAS has adopted, which are afforestation, plastic management, and lake rejuvenation. We start with the Orion House, supported by sports coordinator, Veera Vishwan Nala. House Community Service Coordinator, Yashika Naresh Ramchandani. House Activities Coordinator, Meera Siddhat Malaya. 
and we present to you the Orion House Captain Karthik Raj M. Kumar. Next comes the Pegasus House, supported by sports coordinator Sanya Manoj, House Community Service Coordinator Rohit Kalale, and House Activities Coordinator Tarun Vishwanathan. Presenting the Pegasus House Captain, Akil Sagaran Kasturi. Our house is Pegasus. Green is our color. Our motto is exemplar business, which means lead by example. We now have the Phoenix House with Purvi Sri Raman as a sports coordinator. Dhyan Yogeshwara as the House Community Service Coordinator. Harshala Patel as the House Activities Coordinator. And presenting the Phoenix House Captain, Pratiba Pradeep. Our house is Phoenix. Yellow is our color. Our motto is Sa Her, which means without fear. Last but never the least is the Hercules House, backed by sports coordinator Abhinav Singh, House Community Service Coordinator Maira Daga, and House Activities Coordinator Ram Pranav. We present to you the Hercules House Captain, Ovia Kalaivanen. Our house is Hercules. Blue is our color. Our motto is Invicta, which means invincible. And now, for those captains who show us that the difference between the impossible and possible lies in a person's determination ensuring we put our best foot forward in national and international competitions are our school sports captains. Satva Kishan Sampat, and Sanya Manoj Masan. Divya, we talked about the Innovation Council. Did you know that this year we had students from grades 9 to 12 competing for the positions of the school innovation project captains? They may be young, but the onus they would have to bear is definitely not a small one. They would be responsible for driving four whole school mega projects and making the endeavor successful. That's right, Sahab. The innovation project on well being for the pursuit of happiness would be led by captains Meghna Jairaman from grade 12. Shriya Balaji Raghavan from grade 12. Tanvi Nanda from grade 12. Riya Sani from grade 11. Samin Rahman from grade 10. Anaya Jetanandani from grade 10. And Diprishka Duki from grade 9. Leading the innovation project on affordable technologies for equal opportunities would be captains Harish Shankar from grade 12. Priyanj Bhattar from grade 12. Agastya Singh from grade 11. Naren Ramesh from grade 11.
Puja Parthasarthi from grade 11. Manya Singh from grade 10. And Santosh Sental Kumar from grade 9. The captains who will strive to imbibe the culture of innovation and lifelong learning are Hari Krishnan M from grade 12. Shraddha Desai from grade 12. Varun Venkatesh from grade 12. Adiv Regi from grade 11. Vedan Lakundi from grade 11. Anvi Kurade from grade 10. And Dhruti Mahesh from grade 9. The captains for the innovation project on power of persuasive communication will be Anaya Dalal from grade 12. Priya Bhatnagar from grade 12. Gayatri Jain from grade 11. Ayush Thakur from grade 10. Shri Stuti Shridapu from grade 10. And Amelia Joseph from grade 9. And now, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, we present to you the school captains. Aman Sharma. And Navi Agarwal. The batons will be handed over to the school captains by our principal, Mrs. Sarojini Rao. The Indus Baton is a symbolic representation of integrity and uprightness, the foundation for every position held in this council. It is now time for oath taking, for which I would like to call upon the school captains. We, the members of the Innovation Council, we, the members of the Innovation Council, Promise to fulfill our duties. Promise to fulfill our duties to the best of our ability. To the best of our ability, without fear or favor. Without fear or favor, and in accordance with the core values of Indus. And in accordance with the core values of Indus. Thank you, captains. We have amongst us the visionary whose firm belief is that the purpose of education in the 21st century is to prepare the child for life. Education World named him one of the 50 game changers in the education scenario in India. It is none other than the managing director and CEO of Indus Trust, Lieutenant General Arjun Ray. It is a proof that he walks the talk, spearheading initiatives such as Startup You, Design Your Future, and School of Future. He guides and leads to example, inculcating an ethos of discipline and passion for excellence in the Indus community. May I humbly request Lieutenant General Arjun Ray to address the gathering. Uh, Mr. Sarojini Rao, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, the members of the first innovation council in the school. I take this opportunity to, to remind you and underscore the fact that investiture is not a mere ritual. The investiture ceremony is not to give you a sense of power, authority, or to embellish your CV for college placements. 
it signifies, the investiture signifies a grand opportunity to develop your leadership competencies, to be more than average, to be unique, to be an outlier. In today's highly competitive world, the law of average does not work in practical terms. And secondly, is to make a difference on the campus and beyond, for which this agency, this entitlement, this empowerment has been given to you. And lastly, to be a role model, to inspire your peers and other children on the campus and to make them convinced that bottom-up innovation is the way ahead in schools, in corporations, in government, as well as the world. Therefore, it is in my view that investiture is more important in your life than graduation from school. You have to think about it. In a world that is becoming increasingly a VUCA that is volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Creative leadership is the number one competency of the 21st century. To be life ready, to be startup ready, to be future ready, to meet the challenges of the fourth industrial revolution. Consequently, leadership and innovation like in Indus schools, should continue to be taught formal, in a formal manner like any other subject uh, in your curriculum there. You will recall the prophetic words of the Duke of Wellington immediately after the victory he scored over Napoleon in the Battle of Waterloo. He said that the Battle of Waterloo was won on the playing fields of Eton. He attributed his military victory to the values and the leadership competencies that were taught to him and to the officers who led this great victorious campaign. It is only in schools, nowhere else, no college, no corporation, no other life, that students receive their best opportunities to develop and practice leadership experientially. We at Indus firmly believe that leadership should start early, as early as possible from age of three upwards or even earlier. The world, ladies and gentlemen, is not interested in what your qualifications are. To say that uh, I have been the school captain in the Innovation Council or I have, this is my CV over there, has got no value. It's got paper value. The world wants to know what have you done with your qualifications? What has been the impact of your qualifications and achievements while you were in school, while in college, and while in your career? In other words, what creative transformation did you bring about in other people first and then in you? How different are you today from what you were yesterday? That is a question you must introspect upon continuously as members of the Innovation Council. While subject content is available on Google in abundance, subject content can be memorized. Like you can memorize your scriptures without understanding what it means. You can quote scriptures without understanding what it implies. But it takes years of practice, of dedication, anything up to 10 years to build values, to build innovative and leadership competencies, to build talent, and what is often banded about the growth mindset. It doesn't happen overnight. School curriculum must therefore refocus on developing innovative competencies rather than subject content. I know this is happening here in Indus Bangalore, and I'd like to compliment the principal, Mrs. Rao, for leading this uh, whole campaign, if I can use the word campaign, 
in a military sense and a social sense to emphasize not just subject content, but the competencies to apply those, apply that content in real life situations. This is why unknown to most schools in India, academic rigor has been redefined as academic excellence plus innovative competencies equals academic rigor. In practical terms, this is also the redefinition of what we mean when we say holistic education. Leadership should start early because of creativity. In 1968, George Land was commissioned by NASA to evaluate the creative potential of NASA astronauts, engineers, scientists, and technicians. He gave the same test to 1,600 children from age three to eight and to adults, 2,80,000 adults separately. And the results were profound. In social psychology. He discovered that children at the age of five were 98% creative geniuses. By 10, that means when they went into middle school, it dropped to 30%. Huge drop of 68%. By the time they were about to pass out, at the age of 15 to 17, it dropped even further to 12%. And the shocker came when adults whose average age was 31, they had dropped to 2%. What an irony in life, ladies and gentlemen. We have 98% capability, yet we go around the world through our life, through our career with a 2% capability. We have nobody to blame except ourselves. Therefore, schools and students must nurture their DNA given power of creativity. It's a joint responsibility. If we fail, we fail you as children and as young adults. And the third reason why we should start early is because of positive learning outcomes. Harvard did a, a, a mega study in 1979, it's one of the most famous studies in leadership ever conducted by any university. And this was on goal setting. A Harvard goal setting survey revealed that only 3% in the MBA class of 1979, you can imagine there were quite a few hundreds of them, had written goals and had plans to support them. Their performance in later life was awesome. This category of 3% were earning 10 times more than all the rest 97% combined and successful. And I must make a special mention of creativity. Creativity is the use, I mean, there's a lot of uh, a gap in understanding the difference between creativity and innovation. Creativity is the start point, but by itself, it means nothing. It means nothing, it is zero. Creativity is the use of original ideas to create a person, to create a product, a process, or solve problems that are difficult, challenging, and wicked. It's not an infinite resource. So like any other talent, if you do not practice a given talent, you simply lose it. I was the Rajasthan state table tennis champion when I was in school. Today, I am a beginner as far as table tennis is concerned. So creativity has to be nurtured right from the beginning. And now comes the deep cut, the difference between creativity and innovation. 
creativity as i mentioned to you is to conceive new ideas original ideas to consider alternatives and possibilities innovation is to turn that idea into a reality and that is where you require lots of companion skills like empathy like critical thinking collaboration risk taking independent thinking and focus my young friends focus is the new iq you can have an iq of 165 like einstein had but if you have don't don't have focus a person with an iq of 120 will beat you hands down therefore these companion competencies and skills have to be developed in order to turn creativity into innovation and i end my address to you this morning by focusing on the greatest master competency that human beings can have a competency which differentiates human beings from the rest of the species on the planet everything is common except this one and that is to have a higher purpose in life a common question we often ask children as parents and as grandparents and as neighbors and friends is what is it that you want to be when you grow up and you get the standard answers the standard answers are i want to be an engineer i want to be a, a doctor i want to be a pilot an astronaut and i want to be a millionaire i will tell you what john lennon had something to say on this call when he was 5 years old he is still in the early learning center he says that when i was 5 years old my mother always told me that happiness was the key to life when i went to school the teacher asked me what i wanted to be when i grow up i wrote down happy the teacher said to me i don't understand the assignment and i told the teacher you don't understand life these are the profound words of a 5 year old kid no surprising that john lennon was a genius in music so i want you to understand the difference between a purpose and a higher purpose and there is a lot of confusion and we we get trapped in this confusion your purpose comes out of your responsibilities towards your passion whatever it is your family your near and dear ones your community your religion your higher purpose has got nothing to do with this your higher purpose goes beyond your self interest it is towards other people is to the world to the environment and you can discover your potential and that's what education is all about if you are driven by a higher purpose and in our exercise at indus we believe and science is on our side to reinforce our belief that the journey must begin as early as age 3 and we say that for a scientific reason and the citing scientific reason is that children understand concepts of life better than adults they are more creative and more spiritual than adults they have distinct advantages over adults they have a better moral imagination a sense of right and wrong they are more ethical and just as a matter of interest in 2017 i did an, a very informal study to identify the average age when great people in the past 2000 years obtained enlightenment the answer was the average was 27 and there were many people who at the age of 8 9 and 10 had become enlightened 
so age experience has got nothing to do with enlightenment or seeking your higher purpose it's maybe science is a very esoteric term when we say purpose it's a very esoteric term but the members of the innovation council particularly if you don't have a higher purpose by the time you you don't find your higher purpose by the time you finish your tenure at indus bangalore in the innovation council uh, you will miss a grand opportunity and time and tide wait for none you have to just ask yourself three questions honestly without any distraction without any interference from anybody by reflecting and by introspecting and you'll get the answer you'll get the answer better than any answer anybody any rishi or guru or any sage can give you because you are children of god the god is within you you have the power you have the capability you have the inspiration to find the answer yourself what is it question number 1 what is it that you will give to life not what is it i want from life what is it i will give to life that is going to be your reason for being here question 2 what is it in the community that bothers you makes you angry restless frustrated what is it there must be something you are empathetic creatures though your empathy will start declining possibly as you grow up in age but as the moment you are more empathetic than adults you have a better conceptual understanding than adults what is it that is broken that you want to fix and thirdly how therefore question answer to question 3 is how will you make a difference in society how will you contribute your gifts your talent your passion to make the world a better place and to make you a better a person finally my young friends i repeat that being a member of the innovation council is a life opportunity it is not to be taken as a brownie point to embellish your cv for college placement it will help you a lot to get a foot in the door possibly but later in life if you do not fall the innovative path everything will come crashing down you do not have much time to have an impact therefore you have to start running as you hit the ground from the moment the investiture comes to a close i am very happy and i'd like to compliment the principal for taking up four mega innovative projects and they must have a transformational impact on the campus in the community as well as in the environment and uh, i would like to add a note of caution here we have to move away from this culture of fundraising we are not an event we are not an event management company so fundraising from creating websites and apps when we talk of these three things it shows a complete emptiness in our mind as far as creativity is concerned the innovation council is the most cost effective way for each of you to be future ready it is our firm belief unshakable belief battery 98% that creativity shall i found one two pro has to be bottom up has to be bottom up in an organization whether it is toyota factory whether it is pepsi cola whether it is indus 100 whatever connecting to shelly i found one two and this is the important point 
the important message with the Innovation Council is sending across. The message of agency. Without student agency, bottom-up innovation on the campus is not possible. And we, from the management side, and from the uh, school leadership side, will give you all the facilities to be and to remain empowered in your journey of innovation. We wish you the very best in your endeavors to spearhead this innovation. To the best of my knowledge, I have not seen any innovation councils, at, certainly at a school level, anywhere in the world. And um, I have not seen innovation council even at national level in most countries of the world. So you are going to be path breakers. And may God bless you and give you all the courage to make this happen. Thank you very much. Those were truly action-provoking words, sir. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now we have the drooping of the colors. Every heart beats true beneath the widespread wings of the Indus Eagle on the flag, green and gold. I now call upon Aman Sharma and Navya Agarwal and the house captains to present the school flag. Flags owe their origin to being a colored symbol or sign of a group or a clan. Being associated with valor, dedication, and allegiance, the flags in due course of time have become a symbol of identity, an object of respect and veneration. The Innes flag has been consecrated by priests of all faiths and is made on rare dupian silk and dyed in British raisin green. Emblazoned is in the center is the eagle with the wings outstretched in all its glory, representing free spirit and the ability to soar and reach beyond one's grasp. Apollated to the left of the eagle are the four houses, Orion, Pegasus, Hercules, and Phoenix. On the right, the core values, love, empathy, discipline, and respect. Clutched in the talons of the eagle are the bejeweled pen and brush, the most potent instruments of learning from time immemorial. The applicate inscription of the school motto, In Omnia Paratus, prepared for all challenges, provides a stable base to the image. Ladies and gentlemen, at this point, we would like to introduce Mr. John Rabindranath, who would be driving our innovation projects. With a rich area of experiences in community development initiatives at Indus, coupled with his core belief in student engagement, he is truly deserving of the position of innovation officer. Having had the privilege of being mentored by the principal and CEO himself, he will now lead an able team that endeavors to imbibe the school's vision and ethos through innovation as he continues to function as the director of administration. Ladies and gentlemen, we now come to the end of the ceremony. Please rise for the school song.
Divya and I, Saha, join in thanking you for attending the ceremony today and encouraging our young leaders. Wishing you a very good weekend.